All right, so our next lesson is on weighted and trimmed means. It's going to be quite a way, uh, or quite a lot similar to what we were talking about on the very first day when we were talking about mean average. So we're covering three concepts today that build on what we learned about mean average from before. We're going to talk about trimmed mean, we're going to talk about uh, weighted mean, and we're going to talk about repeated items and mean. So all of these things, of course, are building on that idea of mean. Let's get started. So for trimmed mean, uh, recall from previous lessons that one downside of finding the mean average is that an outlier, which is a number that is either bigger or larger, or bigger or smaller, sorry, than the rest, can actually skew your entire mean. So we looked at an example, for instance, with uh, a bunch of people's income and one person was making way, way, way more money than everyone else, uh, that would have been an outlier, right? So in other words, that was skewing the mean, it made the mean way higher than it should have been. Now a trimmed mean can solve this problem. Right? So this actually can help take care of that issue and make it so you can still use mean to find uh, an appropriate average. So when there's at least one outlier, you can omit, or in other words exclude, uh, an equal number of data items from both the upper and lower ends of the data set. So in other words, you're just trimming both ends of a data set. So if there was someone who's making way more money uh, than everyone else, you would just cut that value off. But of course, to be fair, if you took someone off the high end of the list, you have to take someone else off at the bottom end of the list, right? Uh, then you can find the mean of the remaining numbers in the data set. So in other words, if there was 20 numbers in total and you took one off the top and one off the bottom, you'd have 18 left over, you can find the mean of those 18 leftover numbers. So this is called the trimmed mean for a very obvious reason. You're trimming your whole data set, you're finding the mean. Uh, all right, so let's do an example because this is way easier with an example. Suppose you had the data set, all those numbers. Calculate the mean. All right, well, first of all, to calculate the mean, you're just going to add all these numbers up and then divide by that sum. Uh, I'm going to save us some time here and not actually write out me adding all these numbers up. Um, but if we add them up, one, uh, 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2 plus 15, you're going to get 36. So if we add this all up, it equals 36. And then remember, we have to divide that by the total number of numbers that exist here. Well, there's eight different numbers here, so we've got to go 36 divided by 8, which gives us a mean of 4.5. Okay, so that's just our mean for this data set, right? Now, what is or what are the outliers here? Well, there's one very obvious outlier. If you look at all these numbers, 15 very clearly is way bigger than the rest. So 15 is an obvious outlier. Now, some people might look at this and go, oh, maybe one is an outlier as well. Well, this is where it's very subjective. It's up to you to, um, you know, kind of figure out whether or not, you know, certain numbers are outliers or not. But I think one personally, my personal opinion is one is not an outlier here. It, it lies within this whole range of numbers pretty well. But if you wanted to list one as well, I would never say you were wrong on that one, right? But that's totally fine. So then it says calculate the trimmed mean. This is where it's a really good uh, thing to say either one is an outlier or not an outlier because here's where it really doesn't matter which one was which. To calculate the trimmed mean, it's important to have these numbers in uh, proper order first. So I'm going to write these out in order. The smallest number, of course, is one. Cross them out as I go. Then the next number is two. We have another two in the list. And then we have a three. And then we have a couple fours or four gone and gone, and then we have 5 and 15. So those are now taken care of. So again, the trimmed mean is going to work by cutting off your outlier, right? So if you were like me and just said, you know what, 15 is the only outlier we got, we can chop that outlier off. But remember, regardless of whether you thought one was an outlier or not, to keep this fair, you have to chop off one number from the bottom as well. If there was two outliers on the top, and we cut off two outliers, you'd have to take off the two numbers on the bottom as well. Even if they're not outliers, you have to take off the same number off the top and off the bottom uh, just to stay fair. I'm just going to take those two numbers off though because I don't think that two is an outlier and I don't think that five is an outlier. So these numbers that are left over, those are going to be the numbers I work with. So if we're going to find the trimmed mean now, I'm going to add just these numbers up. So two plus two, I can actually do this without a calculator, two plus two is four, plus three is seven, uh, plus another 4 is 11, plus another 4 is 15, plus 5 is 20. So this is going to equal 20 divided by the remaining numbers, which there's only 6 now, so divided by 6. 20 divided by 6 gives us 3.3 repeating. So notice that that trimmed mean is different than the mean 
that we calculated in the first place. It's a lot lower. And of course, that being a lot lower is probably a better indication of what the real average is in this set of numbers, because that 15 in this first example here was really bumping that number up. I mean, it wasn't bumping it up a huge amount, but it was still bumping it up to the point where uh, it was, you know, certainly higher than most of the numbers in this list. If you want me to put it another way, 4.5 is higher than every number in this list except for 5 and 15, right? So the other six numbers in the list were smaller than this. 3.3, on the other hand, well, that's larger than one, two, three, four numbers in the list and smaller than another four numbers in the list. So four are smaller than it and four are larger than it. That's probably a good, uh, pretty good example of an average. Anyway, moving on to the next one, weighted mean. This is something totally different and it's a little bit more complex, but it's really, really useful. Uh, in school, your assignments and exams aren't all worth the same, right? You know, exams usually are worth a lot more than an assignment, for example, right? So this can be true for various units within a certain course as well. Uh, so in other words, some units might be worth more than other units, such as in Math 30-1. This image, or sorry, Math 30-3, not 30-1, sorry. Math 30-3, this image is actually your Math 30-3 course outline. Um, and I talked about uh, how different units, like your first unit, Algebra and Measurement, or the second unit we're on, Statistics and Probability, they're worth different amounts, right? So different units worth different amounts, right? There are different weightings to them, okay? To account for this, to find like the average grade you have in all of this stuff, right? To account for this, we instead calculate something called the weighted mean. So your final grade is actually the weighted mean of all of your, uh, you know, things you've done in a course, right? So in other words, it's your average in your course, but it's not a normal average, it's not a normal mean, it's a weighted mean because some things were worth more than others. Uh, to calculate the weighted mean of a data set, you need to know what each part of the data set is worth. In other words, you need to know the weighting. If you don't know the weighting of stuff, you can't really calculate the weighted mean because there's no point in even starting or trying that, right? Then multiply each data item by its weighting expressed as a decimal number, right? So for example, if I said something was worth 70%, you would multiply that data number by 0 0.70. 0 0.70 is another way of saying 70%. Then calculate the mean using those new numbers. This probably sounds like a lot. It's way easier to understand this if I just show you an example. So here we go. Suppose in a college course that, you, that your final grade is made of assignments, tests, and the final exam. Assignments are worth 20%, tests are worth 30%, and the final exam is worth 50%. So right there, those are your weightings. That's what everything is weighted, right? In her course, Amber earned 85% on her assignments, 60% on her tests, and 65% on her final exam. What is her final grade? Well, remember before I said your final grade is the weighted mean of the stuff that you've done in the course. So here's how we go about doing it. This number right here, 85%, is one of our data items, as is 60%, as is 65%. So these are our actual data points. What we should do is multiply our data points by their weightings. But remember, when you multiply it by a weighting, you have to turn the weighting into a decimal. So I'm gonna leave these data numbers as percentages, so I'll say 85%, but 85% for an assignment needs to be turned down based on its weighting. Well, its weighting, of course, was 20%, so I'm gonna times that by 0 0.20. Then what we have is we have our uh, test grade, right? So 60% on our tests times by what the tests are worth, which is only 30%. Last but not least, we have our final exam grade, 65%. And we're going to times that by its weighting, which is 0 0.50. What we're going to do next is we're going to figure out what each of those numbers are. 85% times 0 0.20 gives us 17. 60% times 0 0.30 gives us 18. That's kind of a weird coincidence. Uh, and then 65 times 0 0.50 gives us 32.5. Now what we have to do is we just have to add these numbers together. So 17 plus 18 plus 32.5 gives us 67.5. That actually is her final grade. 
So I think I said earlier, you have to find the mean of all this. That was a mistake. No, you just have to add up all of these numbers because that now accounts for it. Okay, so 65.7% is her final grade. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, next one we're gonna look at is repeated items and mean. This is a bit different. Suppose, or sorry, sometimes you're asked to calculate the mean of a data set that has many repeated items. Repeated items must be counted each, must be each counted, must each be counted, holy smokes. Um, but we can take advantage of multiplication to do the work for us. So for example, this will go real quick. Suppose there's 20 people in a room that are 66 inches tall, 15 people that are 68 inches tall, and 12 people that are, that are 71 inches tall. Find the mean average height of a person in that room. Well, instead of going 66 plus 66 plus 66 20 times, and then plus 68 plus 68 plus 68 15 times, and then plus 71 plus 71 plus 71 12 times, why don't we just use multiplication to help us out here? 20 times people who are 66 inches tall gives us 20 times 66 is 1,320. And then 15 times 68 inches tall, 15 times 68 gives us 1,020. Uh, and then 12 times 71. Well, 12 times 71 gives us 852. Then we can add all of this up, 1320 plus 1020 plus 852 equals 3192. Now, do you think that's our mean? Hopefully not. That is certainly not our mean average height. The average person in this room hopefully is not 3192 inches tall. So instead now we have to divide that number by the total number of people in the room. So this is why it's different than weighted mean. And I apologize earlier if I confused you on that one, but with weighted mean, uh, you, you just had your final answer right off the bat, but with repeated items, we have to still divide by the number of items we had in the first place. Well, 20 plus 15 plus 12 gives us 47 items in total. So we're gonna divide that by 47. So 3192 divided by 47 gives us, and I'll just round to the nearest 10th, 67.9 inches tall. That would be a good representation of the average mean height of a person in that room. Anyway, we're done for today. So for practice, I want you to try page 124 to 131, all questions. This is gonna be quite a lot. So if you don't get through it today, don't like, don't kick yourself. You can work on it a little bit tomorrow uh, and so on. Uh, but complete as many as you can. We're gonna use Wednesday, Wednesday's Zoom meeting to go over them or answer any questions that you might still have. Anyway, best of luck. Talk to you soon.